Greetings and thank you for joining me. Today is May 1st and happy Baltany. The traditional Irish fire leaping ceremony commemorates the halfway point in between the spring equinox and summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. Not only that, we are commemorating a toilet bowl cleaner of a Scorpio lunar eclipse taking place on May 5th. So indeed, we're discussing a rather bumpy, can also be challenging, exciting, soul-resurrecting eclipse season April to May 2023. Now, this is a distinct lunar eclipse taking place on the moon's south node and ruled by Pluto, who is now stationing retrograde today at the first degree of Aquarius and square the moon's notes. Now, this is the distinct signature, a south nodal Scorpio lunar eclipse ruled by a stationing retrograde Pluto is our distinct sign of a collective puke. And nowadays we can do best to really take turns holding each other's hair, holding each other's puke buckets, as what can be surfacing can come from not only prior lifetimes, not only early childhood, but the very depths of our soul. This is scraping the bottom of the barrel, so to remove the toxic poisoned parts, past stories, and unnatural identifications that are ready to be released and let go. Simultaneously, it is as if we are all under the psychic operation table and the hands of fate are moving old pieces out bringing new technologies in, technologies that we've never heard of, can barely comprehend, and yet they are coming into our being, replacing the old as it is simultaneously being swept out. Now this Pluto square the moon's dynamics, we'll break it down into further detail, catalyzes an intense reverberation between these high intensity, like being on the operation table, scalpel, vomiting, pretty intense and uncomfortable movements. And these can bring up waves of panic, inadequacy, anxiety. And we need to bear in mind, this is what we are removing. These high intensity periods of scraping up and removing are necessarily followed and intertwined with necessary recovery periods. We could think of this as a multi-step operation. You know, there's different parts that have to go at different times, layer by layer, but the body has to recover. So we do, will do well to be very tuned into our bodies, extra slow, extra sensitive, and extra gentle on ourselves while we're doing this profound maneuvering. Because these eclipses can really be catalyzing changes that will be long lasting, taking us through summertime into the years to come. So it is worthwhile to get down to the real soul business. Who are we really? What did we really come here to be and accomplish? And what has previously been the clutter, the projection, the bullshit, the assumptions from others that we are rinsing off? It's like when a child goes and plays in the mud and gets all cold and frozen and runs back home all messy and crying. This is a rinse off period. But as layer by layer comes off, we're also really seeing and recognizing where we may have taken on what's unnatural to us 
or where these old stories of betrayal, oppression, mixing with other people's bullshit that really has nothing to do with us, but it got on us. It infected us. And it's not about right or wrong, who's to blame. It is just about simply returning to center. The North Node is completing its transit of Taurus these next few months. The South Node is completing its transit of Scorpio the next few months. We all deserve some very solid pats on the back for surviving the last year and a half of this nodal polarity. One of the most predictable phenomenon while the South Node transited Scorpio the last 18 roughly months was an increase of violence school shootings, deaths, drug overdoses. This is a challenging time as we're scraping the muck of the collective shadow. We're scraping the muck of our own personal unconscious up and out. Not only is it getting swept up and out, we're getting a clear look at exactly what that shit was. How did it get there? How did it infect us? Why is it necessary to remove this clutter and these claustrophobic imprisoning dynamics at this time? So again, Pluto stations retrograde today. A soul scrape up, collective barfing. Tomorrow, asteroid Pallas Athena enters the sign of Leo and opposes Pluto. Friday, the day of our lunar eclipse, that lunar eclipse will oppose Uranus. These oppositions between Pallas Athena and Uranus ignites this high-level objective illumination. Really understanding the bits and the pieces, what's ours and what's theirs. What's real and what's not real as when we shine a flashlight underneath our beds or in our closet, what we previously imagined to be the scary demons or ghosts, well, we get a clear understanding of what those parts and pieces actually are. With Pluto being square, the moon's nodes at this time being integrated by this south nodal eclipse, we are being asked to step back into our power. This story, the bullshit of the past, we could summarize, is going to involve what stripped us of our power, what misled us from our essential nature and our natural way and pace of orienting ourselves to the rest of life, including our relationships. This also catalyzes an intense reverberation between Scorpio, the need for intimacy, connection, merging, transformation, evolution, pushing forward, taking our power back, and the need for slowness, the need for our own space to retrieve into our temple, to be the hermits that we are, that can enjoy the natural simplicity of life without the bullshit, the clutter, the intimacy. So there's an intense reverberation with Pluto square the nodes. This can have a going off the deep end or getting off of our rocker type of dynamic as we learn to recontain our power. This is a soul resuscitation. This is clearing out, and it can even take place on the physical, a clearing out to make space for more consciousness to come into our body. This is about embodiment. But as we're going through this resuscitation, we could very well also be processing the reality that we have not yet been living. It would be wise to leave ourselves some space and time for that processing and to hold ourselves in the most gentle, caring way 
so not to berate ourselves for having had to live the life that we've already had to live. Most of us having encountered circumstances that forced us out of our body, that forced us to maintain a way of living that is not natural to us. So as we'll talk about, we're completing the North Node of Taurus, we're mastering Taurus. And we simply have a way of being we were born to be. That is what Taurus is, plain and simple. Fish swim, birds fly. Fish pops out of water, that fish better flop itself back into water. If a bird spent its whole life living in a cage, is it possible that that bird has forgotten what its natural way of being is? far removed from being stuck in a cage. Similarly, we are all born into specific ways of being that is just right for us. And that is where this soul resurrection can be taking place. That is what we can be returning to. And again, the mechanism is we're probably experiencing that excitement that we get to return, that we get to live this life. There are so many future possibilities that are really exciting our collective species at this time with Pluto at the first degree of Aquarius. I mean, we're really seeing the conversations out there. Very, very exciting. There's also a lot of fear and apprehension about the future, about the unknown and what's to come. So, for example, AI, artificial intelligence, is certainly going to be a part of our future, entering an Aquarian age and entering you know, a couple decades of Pluto into Aquarius. My two cents about this phenomenon and so many future phenomenon that we're just barely beginning to have introduced to us at this time is we take it all with a grain of salt because we do not know what's coming yet. We're having it being teased. We're having it being foreshadowed. We're having some preliminary invitation, but we're not quite there yet. And we don't need to get overly afraid, overly excited. That is a part of these times is we're getting that kick. We're getting that spur. But we do not know what the future holds at this time. We're simply going through the necessary operation and adjustment to make space for the new to enter. From that point forward, it's largely going to be about experimentation. Now, this eclipse is going to be like a penetrative x-ray machine that brings us into a soul level detox. How this can be taking place may not even make total sense or be totally certain right now. It could be circumstance. It could be just, well, life just keeps repeating these patterns. My body is changing. My body is having allergic reactions to things I never used to have allergic reactions to before. That's what we're talking about here. So to prepare ourselves for the future, we have to make serious changes at this time. What may be hard changes, fast changes, taking us from an entirely different dimension into a completely separate one. Again, this is all in balance with the appreciation for what we have, for what we are made of. So this is a period largely bringing us into our core essence. And this can also have an interesting effect in terms of how we're connecting and sharing with others in our relationships. Today, Venus squares asteroid Ceres. On Thursday the 4th, Venus will square Neptune before entering into Cancer through the rest of May. This also highlights haziness in terms of how we're doing this exchange with others. Who are they really? What are we really doing? What do I really want to be doing with them? What do I really like? 
And let's embrace this haziness. Venus Neptune squares are nothing to fear so long as we're not being carried swept off of our feet with the rose tinted glasses or this person changed and suddenly they're everything or this doesn't make sense. So let's completely throw it out. We are not likely going to benefit from that type of extremity at this time, though there can certainly be reactions and forces pushing us in that direction. And if that takes place, uh, it's really, really an important full moon to be extra, extra gentle with one another. Again, this is us taking turns holding our hair while we fill the collective puke bucket. So this isn't about taking personally what that puke is, how, the, you know, the reactivity is, is coming out. It's about being extra gentle and considerate with one another, holding love in our hearts without having to precision hone exactly and specifically what that may look like on the outside, at least not yet. I think we can be writing these things in our diary. We can be processing these things. We can be examining these things, but at least these weeks, we want to be a little bit careful and hesitant to allow for the full picture and all of the pieces to come together. There is a juggling with Venus in Gem completing her transit of Gemini. On May 6th, asteroid Ceres also stations direct at 23 degrees of Virgo opposite to Neptune, which brings up a tremendous desire to care. Venus square Ceres also wants to care, wants to show up, wants to support the other best we can. And we are learning this balance because the focal point is very much on our way and pace of being like every human being is their own universe. Now is the time to very much close the circuit enough to recognize how we operate on our own. We at least need to know ourselves. That's what Taurus is all about, knowing what we like, what makes us tick, this is to create a new centerpiece that will hold the foundation for our entire life. This is how we step into appreciation, filling up our own glass with what may be very base, simple, very base level, easy. Yet we're mastering this new type of self-provision, which will ultimately only benefit those that are around us how we are relating, how we are depending on one another is changing. And the overall direction towards Taurus is pragmaticism. It's not necessarily super romantic now. And I know this is very challenging for my dear spiritual, sensitive, compassionate demographic to hear, but I've been saying it often out loud anyways. We are all getting things from one another. What am I getting from you? What are you getting from me? Sure, that's not very romantic sounding, but let's get down to brass tacks. Let's get real about what we want to get and what we want to give so we can form these means of exchanging that are relaxed, that are easy, that are natural and unforced. That is the aim of the game. Who do we have room for? How are we inspiring one another? When we close the door to ourself and go in, what is the treasure chest that we're already seated upon? What is the treasure chest that we have been seated upon the entire time? What do we consider a treasure? If there's nobody else in the room, if there's no he said, she said, and no external opinion, what do we really like? And how can we bring more of that into our life? So this can largely be a reductionist process, but this reductionist and minimalization will certainly be leading us into the wisdom of less is more. And in our next video and in forthcoming videos, we're going to be shining a light on Jupiter entering Taurus, which will certainly be bringing this wisdom of less is more 
as well as directing us towards those resources to effectively fill up our own glass. This is incoming mid-May, and then through the year to come, Jupiter in Taurus. At the end of April, Mercury stationed retrograde in Taurus has been transiting Uranus, and in the next couple of weeks will station direct on the Moon's north node, May 14th. Now, funnily enough, I didn't mention Mercury retrograde in the last video while he was stationing retrograde. That's kind of a tongue-in-cheek response to the astrological community that really, really overhypes Mercury retrograde, especially right when he stations retrograde, and then we forget about the whole process through the weeks and the months to come. So every single Mercury retrograde is good. <laughs> it exists for good reason, evolutionary purpose, and serves a specific function. So no, Mercury retrograde doesn't mean everything falls apart. It doesn't mean things simply go wrong. The reason why there is a common experience of technology, plans, or directions needing to change during a Mercury station retrograde or a retrograde period is it is simply the time to be doing things differently. And the key with Merc retro is to never force a square peg through a round hole. If there is a road closure, we take another road. We don't force the same thing again and again. So Mercury retrograde is largely simply an opportunity to recalibrate. But not only that, there's so much more to Mercury retrograde. It's largely about review. Reviewing. This is why sometimes old friends will come back into contact or we'll be replaying the reels in our head of all of our prior interactions. So to uncross these tangled wires, these tangled knots. And that's exactly what we're experiencing, hopefully, under this Mercury retrograde in Taurus. Taurus is so much about s simplicity. Mercury in Taurus is not a psychotherapist. <laughs> Mercury in Taurus says, birds are birds, fish are fish, sticks are sticks. I function this way because it works. I am interested in these things because I find them interesting. I find them interesting because I do. I just like them because I like them. That's my taste. Cow was born to chew on grass all day. Cow is not psychoanalyzing itself or it's eating grass. It's on automatic. That's what we're discovering. And that's where we can be unnodding these distractions. We need to recognize our own inner resources. And we were born a certain way. Each living being serves a function. And when we really become aware of ourselves and our individuality, we see that what we were born to be ends up becoming our work, our service, and our offering back to the collective. But we don't even need to hyper-focus on that. The cow is offering its service just by eating grass all day. It's not thinking about the amount of people she's feeding with her milk. But she does. She serves her function. She is a powerhouse producer. And so are we in highly unique ways on the individual level. So we are all born into a specific, static, an unchanging role and function. And when we become self-aware, we recognize that that function or work is actually what brings ultimate satisfaction. Similarly to the cow producing milk, we don't even have to hyper-focus on the fact that I am a charitable person. I am offering myself back to the collective. I'm giving myself back to others. Honestly, with Ceres stationing opposite to Neptune, we need to be careful of where we can become overexpending or boundary lists or saying yes too often to too many people as if we have millions of legs and arms and can do everything. So this is about understanding that we will naturally give back to the collective 
by discovering, uncovering, and honoring our natural way of being. This sometimes gets confused, gets skewed, gets turned into hierarchies of power and control, and that's where things go very wrong. For example, in India, the idea of the caste system is essentially this. We're all born into specific roles, and boy, did it go wrong. It's not meant to be a hierarchy of who's better or worse. It's simply an understanding that we are born into a static role and function. That is nature's design. It is not a good, bad, political type of thing. Again, sticks are sticks. Ultimately, the best work that we can be offering is the work that honors our heart and our way and pace of being. This is the reality of Taurus. While we are maneuvering the high intensity waves of Pluto square the moon's nodes, and yes, this will continue through summertime, we need to balance these waves out with the opposite polarity. When we feel like we're getting shredded to pieces and we don't even understand why, but suddenly we're in a highly furnace level, claustrophobic, tight space and it's uncomfortable and we don't even know what's going on, we can understand, all right, we must be on the divine operate, operation table right now. When that wave of fear, anxiety, inadequacy, whatever it may be, hits, recognize that may be exactly what is being purged out of your system. What's most important in these high-intensity moments is the understanding that this will pass. And we can really be showing ourselves this as this mechanism is likely to increase. Beep, 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 beep now through June, July. So we're really learning to surf consciousness and evolution in a very profound way. This is soul level healing. So when those waves of intensity hit, we can remember this will soon be followed by a necessary recovery space. I have to lie on the hospital bed, maybe just with a little bowl of ice cream, Calm down whatever part of myself is hurting. If we have a sore throat, take care of it. When you're well rested and when you're back on your feet, we resume. And this is going to be the getting slapped down, getting picked up process of resurrecting our soul from the dead. And it has been a degenerative process in the past. So a part of this can also be the recognition that part was falling apart. That part was dying. The first thing that happens when we have an awareness of a broken bone is pain and discomfort. But that pain and discomfort brings awareness to those parts so we can take care of them. And then we no longer have to be, uh, you know, overwhelmed by the intensity of, of this pain. If we've been out of body up until this point, chances are there's a great deal of pain going on in our body, physically, emotionally, psychically, etc. As we are coming back into our bodies, that's going to bring this online. At first, that can be incredibly uncomfortable. There's pieces that need to be moved. There's things that need care, pats on the back, warm meal. But this wave after wave is the rinsing of the bullshit off. And truly, this can be bullshit that we assumed as us. If we've been demonized from childhood teachers, parents to early bosses, they said, there's something wrong with you. You're choosing to do this thing. And, and, and you know, it was just a misunderstanding. We were coming at it in a way where we weren't seen properly for who we are. Well, we can assume a misleading identity. We may even identify with the bullshit we've been covered with since we were born. Well, as that shit falls off, rinsing layer after layer, we may be going through a profound rediscovery process of just who 
what and exactly we are, what exactly we're made of, and what exactly we're born to be that's easy, that's natural, that respects our nature, just like the cow eating grass. Allow ourselves to go through this full spectrum of the horrors of the past and the unknown excitement of what's to come. Riding that mechanism back and forth, this is the moon's notes. This reverberation between the past and future is no accident. This is how our soul evolves. That is why Pluto square the moon's nodes is the distinct signature that this high intensity evolution at a fast pace needs to happen at this time if we are choosing to integrate our soul's power into our body. When the waves of excitement hit, wow! Is this how it's going to be? I'm going to be a bliss bunny from now on, radiating stars and rainbows, and the universe carries me from one thing to the next effortlessly with me barely having to think or do anything? Take that one with a grain of salt as well. <laughs> because we want to use those periods and really appreciate them and embrace them to fill ourselves up for the next knockdown or for the next wave of purging or the next wave of anxiety. So this is the polarity magic to keep ourselves centered, even while the boat is being rocked by these extremities. When we get knocked down on our feet, we could very well be witnessing the divine fortune that is actually out there looking out for us as inconceivable as it may be, that thing that just knocked us down on our face could have saved us from getting knocked down from something far harsher. We can be seeing these hidden blessings interwound with the challenges, the vomits, the getting pushed over our edges increasingly as well, especially when Jupiter steps up to the moon's north node mid to the end of this month. Of May. So folks, these are exciting times. And for those of you who are getting a little pressed, me and my good friend Maggie Kessler are working on a care package for you. It should be due out in the days and weeks to come. This is specifically to help us through this lunar eclipse. We're using metaphors, parable, analogy, and hypnosis to embody new ways of responding to life itself to make it easier to maneuver through these waves as well as to access our own inner resources when our own conscious mind, the level of excitement, paranoia, or anxiety can be overwhelming. There's still a means to access the deeper well of resources in ourself. That is one of the ways that hypnosis is a profound medicine especially going through high-intensity time. So if you are interested in our custom care package, there is a link in the video description below. I will get a hold of you as soon as it is available. And this care package, of course, can be very useful outside of the window of this lunar eclipse as well. This can be something to use at any point in our life, especially when the boat is being rocked by such high-intensity waves and we are simply being called to bring that boat into the safety of our inner harbor, our inner well of resources, remembering what we have and how we can bring ourselves back to center, even in the midst of such a fascinating, amazing, and again, soul-resurrecting cosmic storm. For those who would like to be more in touch with me, we'll be meeting for our next free community meeting in a couple weeks. And then the weekend following, I give my Q&A circle. My Q&A is also included for all members in my Astro School. So if you'd like to learn how to understand any time, any event, any relationship, any lifetime with far more insight that otherwise could be possible, 
you want to check out my Astro School. Included is a monthly Q&A circle where you can come in as a group. We talk about our charts live. You can bring in a specific question. You can talk about what's going on for this lunar eclipse. Why did this happen? Why do I have this experience? I'm in such a challenging space. How can I maneuver through this experience? My Q&A offers many readings for every attendee in a rapid fire taste test of evolutionary astrology. So to prove that evolutionary astrology can work effectively in real time while we're simultaneously learning the technique and supporting one another as a group. This is a highly unique opportunity. I know nothing like this Q&A outside of the Rasa Leela community. So if you feel called, please join us. We have amazing musicians, artists continuing to come, come together and support one another in increasingly exciting and collaborative ways. It is such an honor to be able to be here, to open my mouth and share, and continue to invite you all in. Looking forward to seeing you again mid-May, and as always, wishing you all the best. Please do take care.